Okay, now we're going to connect the DVD drive ribbon cable. Just pull the flap up on the DVD drive like this. Because the cable isn't long enough, you do need to pull the drive up like this slightly and just gently insert the cable into the drive like so. Just be careful with these cables, they are a little bit flimsy. Don't be too brutal with it, just take your time and then fold the flap down. Now you've got the, the cables connected, just push it down as so, so it's sort of bowing on this angle. Now note the power cable here kind of does a moon shape and fits underneath this bit of plastic here. So when you're going to fold the drive back over, raise it up and just push the power cable in so that it fits, it's going to fit underneath the, uh, the housing here. So, and then you fold the drive over, so just make sure that it's fitting in there. Like so. And lay the DVD drive back down like so. Now with the position that we've used for the chip we found that this actually has the least pushing of the chip up on the DVD drive. You'll notice almost immediately that the drive does fit almost in its original position as if there is nothing underneath the chip. With the chip on the other side of the drive where other people seem to be using it we've noticed the drive doesn't seem to sit as evenly. This position we've used seems to give us the best result for uh, having the drive act as if there is actually nothing underneath it. So now that we've done this, the actual drive key itself is installed and now we'll move on to actually showing you the configuration menu, how to enter the configuration menu and explain some of the settings in the menu. Okay, now that we're installed, we're going to turn on the console and show you how to use the configuration menu for the drive key. Okay, to access the configuration menu for the drive key, it's quite a simple procedure. You just need to hit the eject button three times and it will proceed to load up as if there was a disk in the drive. So one, two, three. Now you just need to wait um, a small amount of time. Don't worry, it takes about 10 seconds for it to actually show up, but it's going to show up as if it's a GameCube game. You've just seen it pop up there now. It virtually emulates uh, a disk function. Similarly, the Wiki 2 actually uses a disk to get to the config menu. These chips actually are able to emulate a drive and the config disk is actually built onto the chip. You just click on the GameCube menu and then load into the configuration menu. Now the configuration menu has a couple of options. The first one being that the drive key itself is on or off. Default is in the uh, on position. Region override, that means that if you own a PAL console such as we have here um, and you want to play NTSC games, region override is on. Same as if you were in the United States um, or Canada or Japan with an NTSC console, if you wish to play a PAL game, region override should be in the on position. Now most importantly, the update blocker. Now basically the update blocker will stop uh, a console from accepting Wii system updates from a game outside its region. Now we've got a PAL console here if we were to put in an original uh, NTSC game and the blocker wasn't on the import setting it's possible to accept a Wii system update and that can brick the machine. So the setting that we recommend that the update blocker be on always is on the import. We never recommend having it in the off position um, if you really want, you can have uh, it in all position, which means that even if it's an NTSC game on an NTSC system, it will still block the NTSC update. But uh, the default setting for this, being import, is, is the, the main one everyone will want to have that on, so that, that's set up correctly. Never change it to the off position, ever. Okay, Wii Disk Auto Boot. Uh, we haven't seen this feature before, but most likely what it would be is that it will just auto-boot the game when you've actually inserted it rather than having to click on it. So you can leave that in the off position unless you, you would like it uh, to, to be in the on and auto-boot when you insert a disc. And lastly is the GameCube region free setting. Similar to the region override, this means that if you own a PAL console such as this, you will be able to use uh, NTSC GameCube games. Now I'll explain how to navigate the menu. Um, you just use the reset button, a gentle, a very quick press of the reset button will actually move up and down to the different option that you wish to change. Now what we'll do is we'll go down to the update blocker 
and change it. Now to actually change a setting, rather than a quick press of the reset button, you hold the reset button in. And notice it's gone to off, we do it again to move it to all, and now it's in the all position. So a quick press down the bottom to the save settings, followed by a long press, and the settings have been now saved and you're able to reboot your Wii. So that concludes the installation and the uh, usage of the configuration disk. Um, and now you're pretty much ready to reassemble the Wii. Um, first we'll just show you uh, a disk uh, booting up in the, the console that the drive is completely functioning. Okay, now the Wii has been turned off after we've uh, done the configuration disk. We've got a backup of our Office original copy of Red Steel. So we're going to insert this into the Wii console, which will turn the machine on. Excuse the camera while it's a little bit blurry. As you see, Red Steel's come straight up. And is booting straight in. Now, we know the drive key, unlike the Wii key, um, is actually a little bit better with media. With the Wii key um, and other chips, they were very, very sensitive to uh, only using verbatim brand DVD minus R. We know the drive key is a little bit sens less sensitive to media. We still do only recommend using verbatim brand media. Um, if you want to minimize having any issues whatsoever, the idea would be to use verbatim DVD minus R media. Always burn at two times or four times speed. Um, also, there is a couple of tips on the DriveKey website when it comes to burning on anything but DVD minus R. So visit the DriveKey website and uh, have a read on there of the information that they've provided. But this pretty much concludes the installation video. Uh, when buying from Multiplier.com, you can see that we provide that little bit of extra uh, service. And if there's uh, any questions anyone has, you can feel free to email us anytime. So uh, this concludes the DriveKey installation video, and uh, we hope you're all happy with the product.